Anybody can follow Jesus when everything is okay. We all sing this wonderful song, I've decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow God. I've decided to follow Jesus. But will you still follow him when the storms, all hell is breaking loose? See how we shout, how we get excited when we sing, I've decided to follow Jesus. Your mama sang this song, your papa sang this song, your sisters are singing this song, your brothers are singing this song, but I have a question for you. Will you still follow him when the storm shows up at your door? When all hell is breaking loose, when you are, your name is on the breaking news. When your name is all over, when your name is being scandalized all over, will you still sing, I have decided to follow Jesus? It's my prayer that my generation will develop a fire to know God more and a desire for God than what God can do for them. We are misleading the body of Christ because no one wants to, uh, to know God. We are all having a fire for the miracles. But God whom I do not know can perform a miracle for me. And let me remind you, miracles are for the non-believers. Because if you are a child of God, you don't need God to perform so that you can believe in him and worship him. Non-believers need miracles so that they can run to God. So quickly now to our text today. There are two groups of people in this text. So for your understanding of this text, allow me to talk to you about these two groups of people. We have the persecutors and we have the Jews. We have the disciples who have been mentored and trained by Jesus. I want you to follow me. I'm laying a foundation. I'm dealing with the theological part of the text so that I can have to talk to you for your full understanding of the text. Because when it comes to the Bible, you have to read it through the Spirit, you have to use the Spirit of God as a mirror to read the Scripture for your own understanding. And that's why God is not understood. God is revealed. And for God to reveal himself to the created creature, the Holy Spirit has to be a mirror. So now, ladies and gentlemen, there is a drift there are agreements and there are fights between the disciples who were mended by Jesus, the disciples who were raised by Jesus, and Apostle Paul. And everybody is uh, playing around to prove a point. Uh, they had Jesus' experience, and like Paul, who has only gone through the transformation. So, uh, Paul has the experience of the Holy Spirit, while the disciples who were raised by Jesus and discipled by Jesus, they have experience of Jesus and experience of the Holy Spirit. So there is no way they are going to believe in someone who have been killing the Christians. And this happens to be our case today, especially after we have gone out there to preach the gospel and someone happens to know something about you. And even though you have made up your mind to receive Jesus as your personal savior, they are all going to look at you like, did you really mean it when you say you are born again? So even though Paul the Apostle has encountered the power of God, 
the Jews, the Jesus disciples uh, are looking at Paul and doubting as if this guy really means what he say and it becomes a problem. Have you ever been in this place, child of God? You are chosen, you are transformed and accepted by God, but now you are rejected by the same people who wanted you to come to Jesus. They preached to you, my sister, to come to Jesus. They fasted for you to come to Jesus and now you have come to Jesus and the first people to reject you are people who prayed for you to receive Jesus. I will preach in this place. <laughs> they talk to you about Jesus and it's the same thing over the people who are praying for you to be blessed. They pray for you to have a breakthrough. They pray for you to get healed. And after God has blessed you, they will be the same people fighting the breakthrough of God in your life. Now, even though Paul has gone through the transformation, Paul has been accepted, anointed, received of God. He is having a problem to be accepted by the people who are already in the kingdom. Is indeed the same problem we have today. After someone has come to the kingdom, someone has received Jesus walking in the salvation and the same people who prayed for you to receive Jesus are the same people who are against you, are receiving of Jesus. <laughs> they are the same people who will fight you. They are the same people who will act ugly and get you off the things of God. It's a problem that Paul has to deal with every day and he is wondering if this is how salvation looks like. <laughs> I will rather go out there and do my thing. I'm done with the church. I'm done with the things of God. If I will go through the same thing I went through outside there in the house of God, I will rather go out there. So they are not going to take it cool with Apostle Paul. They still see him as a devil. They still see him as the persecutor of the brethren. This is where even if you ain't going to like it, God must and will always force out some rejection your way. God will force out the heart of Pharaoh to be hardened. I have a question for you. If God is delivering the Israelites from Egypt, why will God harden the heart of Pharaoh? The Bible says he hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Why will God harden the heart of Pharaoh? Ladies and gentlemen, when God begins to work on you and work with you, he will always want to make sure that the folk you left out there believe that God is doing something with you. I will preach in this place. Later now, Paul is arrested and all this drama is not coming from Satan, it's not coming from enemies, it's not coming from Gentiles, all this fight is coming from the Jews. The same people who could be happy that the persecutor of the Christians has now received Jesus. So as Paul went out preaching Jesus, went out preaching the word and telling people this is not Saul, the killer of the Christians. Christians. Um, this is Paul, a transformed person. Listen to me. You are born again, but they are still doubting you.